are looking for a complete gaming peripheral set that's not gonna break the bank or make your wallet cry well we've got a set right here all under fifty dollars we have the have it mechanical keyboard and gaming mouse combo and this is a full-size 104 keys it comes with this plastic wrist rest that's hard to remove so I'm not going to remove it but it does clip in and we'll show you guys that it's not rubber it's pretty hard all plastic it's got clicky blue switches let's jump into it Hey guys, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Betty. This is Switch and Click, and we provide straightforward and honest mechanical keyboard reviews for you guys. All right, so today we have the Have It. I don't think it has a name for the model itself. Okay, here we go. It's the Have It HB KB389L mechanical gaming keyboard with clicky blue switches on Amazon it just says have it Mecha mechanical gaming keyboard and mouse combo and that's it so that's all we got moving forward the mouse has a model too it's the have it HVMS 733 the mouse isn't bad the mouse is I, I like the mouse actually I, I actually really dig this combo it's a great combo to start up if you're like using an office mouse and an office keyboard to game and you're like hmm I think I want a mechanical keyboard and a gaming mouse but what if I don't like it what if I don't know what to buy what if I can't afford it well you're in luck because for all this it's about $50 so I think it's a great deal and I'm gonna review this in the sense that you're not coming from something better out of the box, we got the keyboard. The wrist rest comes detached from it. And then we have the mouse. So I think we'll talk about the mouse first. It's got the regular USB connector. It has some texture on the side here. See that? It has its logo here. And we have two side buttons right there. We have a scroll wheel that's pretty quiet and the clicks and then we have two buttons so a light button and a DPI button but I think that when you actually use it it's like correlated to each other so the different colors mean different DPI's you can use have it software to program the colors I was using like the rainbow one on the lowest DPI setting because I go real slow but it looks really colorful when you use it it's a good size I have really small hands. It's like six inches from palm to middle finger. So just keep that in mind. It fits my hand pretty well. Uh, downside is that the bottom, these little rubber things is a little bit too frictiony. They don't slide very well on our mouse pad, but that may be because we're using different mouse pads than we usually do. So we have like a Corsair mouse pad, a steel series mouse pad and then we're using desk mats right now so that's a little bit different than what we are used to but other than that it's a very quiet the scroll wheel makes like no noise I like that a lot a non clicky scroll wheel but let's move on to the keyboard let's talk about the wrist rest first I really like the wrist rest because when you're typing or gaming it's not like an actual wrist rest where it digs into your carpal tunnel it's more like a palm rest where your carpal bones just rest straight on top of that and it's really comfortable it makes a really nice angle I really like it um, even though it's like not rubber or not cushioned or anything but no complaints there and then the keyboard itself we have an aluminum top plate and then an all plastic case we have two rubber feet on the back here to prevent slippage and then we have two kickstands so the kickstands do slip a little bit because there's no rubberized surface on the bottom 
non-detachable braided USB cable. No complaints about that since our keyboard probably already has a non-detachable cable in the first place. So that's that. And then the primary difference between rubber and this is the switches. So this is very loud. It's a blue clicky switch. And we'll do a complete typing test at the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. But first, let's take a preview at the stabilizers. So very rally, very loud, probably not what you're used to. And then we've got, these are weird. We've got some strange looking stabilizers. These are not cherry style stabilizers. If anything, they're some kind of weird, weird co-star. I don't know, they're just strange. They're just different than what you have. And I take back what I said on the Otamu, they're actually content blue switches. So there's not a lot of information about content blue switches out there. So really loud stabilizers. We've got a function row, secondary media keys on the function row, and then we've got some macro buttons. We have my computer, Internet Explorer, email, calculator, stop, previous track, pause play, next track, the RGB button, and then uh, volume down, volume up, and mute. And then we have a Windows lock feature. That's nice. And we can change the RGB, up the brightness, or up the frequency as we wish. I believe in the box there's a manual on how to do this. I did write this down. All right, so it's RGB lighting, it's customizable, and it's got 14 preset lighting patterns. We'll go over that right before our typing test. It's got 100% anti-ghosting with all the keys. We have ABS plastic keycaps. One of the problems I had typing with this compared to my keyboard right now is that like the surface area on top of the keyboard feels a little bit small, so I was missing keys a lot or overstepping more often than I usually do. That's one of my complaints. But the keycaps themselves are slippery, non-textured, ABS plastic can accumulate grime and slime as you all know. And you can replace them with PBT keycaps if you want. Those are less likely to develop slime and grime. It's very lightweight. You can change the brightness up to five levels. And then the legends are a little bit clean. Some of the keys I have some issues with, like D, Q, B, O, like the ones where it's not a complete letter and there's gaps in the letters. I just don't personally like that. And then the lighting effects are basically a disco show. It's pretty nice. Some of the, the numbers can be a little bit difficult to see with the lights on. And on our list of 10 budget mechanical keyboards, this one's somewhere near the middle. It's not bad. It comes with a mouse. It's not too ringy, even though the stabilizers are loud. Like at least each type, you know, each typed key doesn't ring and ping. That's one of the downsides of other ones. Like overall for the price, it's a great starter kit. You get the mouse, you get the keyboard, you get the wrist rest. All you need to do is buy a desk mat and you're pretty much set and ready to go. Get yourself a nice headset or a budget headset. So typing test time.
question of the day. Out of all 10 budget mechanical keyboards, which one was your favorite and what other mechanical keyboard would you like us to purchase and review next? We have a long lineup coming in the near future. So I hope you enjoyed this budget series that we got going on. I'm really glad it's over. I hope you're glad it's over. Like we can move past budget keyboards now. Let's move on to some higher end stuff. If you're interested in seeing all of our mechanical re keyboard reviews, press here. And all of our budget mechanical keyboard reviews, press here and subscribe here if you want to. All the links are down below and we'll see you in the next one.